I've got to say, Wanhao as a company continues to surprise me. As a Chinese manufacturer, they seem to have come out of nowhere. And I remember the early Wanhaos I heard about were just straight up MakerBot 2X replicator clones, which at the time I just dismissed as another 3D printing company out of China that was there to make a quick buck. Then in early 2015, I noticed a low cost Prusa i3 style machine from Wanhao start popping up the Duplicator i3. The thing about this machine that set it apart from all the other i3 clones on the market were its sheet metal design that really got my attention as an industrial designer and someone looking for a rigid, low cost 3D printer to sort of experiment with. The machine was okay, but certainly not perfect. And you can watch the review for that here. So now late 2016, Wenhao has released the Wenhao Duplicator i3 Plus. Is it everything we've been hoping for? Watch to find out. How's it going guys and welcome back to Maker's Muse. So let's back step for a second. If you've never heard about the Wenhao Duplicator i3, listen closely. This machine has gone through many versions and revisions and rebrands and it's very easy to get confused. So let's step through them. So this is the original Wenhao Duplicator i3 which I bought direct from China early 2015. So you can see it's got the flat face here LCD with an encoder wheel. It had an original Mark 10 design extruder which I've replaced with a custom mount and a uh, builds prototyping studio version 2 BPS extruder which I'm still uh, dialing in. But yeah, it's a great hacking machine. It was a good tinkerer's machine but it did have a lot of issues. So this is the Wenhao Duplicator i3 version 2, otherwise known rebranded as the Cocoon Create or in the America as the Monoprice Maker Select version 2. So this is the machine that was sold in Aldi supermarkets around Australia and it sold out here in the first day. And this is definitely one of my daily driver 3D printers. I use this machine all the time. It's very much hopped up. It's got a Flexion extruder now for printing flexible materials and I'm currently printing on print bite uh, printing surface which is great for sticking things down and they pop off nicely when it cools down. So improvements with a slope screen here, same encoder wheel and same LCD just with a slope. And again, it's got the spool holder on the top and overall same sheet metal design. And there was lots of improvements in terms of how the wires were routed to stop those wire fatigue issues that the version one suffered from. And this is the Malian M150, which is not a Wanhao at all, even though it looks very similar to the Wanhao i3 version one. It's actually a complete clone of that machine made in a different factory. And you can only tell that by looking at very close details that are different to this machine in the sheet metal construction versus the Wanhao Duplicator i3. Clones of clones. All of these machines have been reviewed right here on Maker's Muse and you can check out the links to their reviews in the video description. But this is the Wanhao Duplicator i3 Plus. So first impressions, similar looks. It's got a sheet metal frame and it has exactly the same build volume as you would expect from previous i3 generations. It's 200 by 200 by 180 millimeters in size. And as I said, it's completely sheet metal, which is something I've come to appreciate from the Wanhao i3 designs. It's a lot more rigid than you'd get from an acrylic laser cut frame. But something I really would like to know, is Wanhao listening? So let's take a trip down memory lane and look at the things I didn't like in the original Wanhao Duplicator i3. Like the original, the machine comes flat packed and you need to secure the gantry in place with four screws. But wait, is something missing here? Remember that awkward external power supply and control box linked to the printer with a bundle of wires? That's right, Wanhao has removed that control box completely and made all the electronics completely internal into the Wanhao i3+. Plus. All the power supply and control electronics are now housed in the base of this machine, raising it up a little bit in height, but otherwise making it a much more compact and easier to transport unit. Big thumbs up from me. And you'll notice in doing this, the LCD screen is now in the front. But some of you might say, but wait Angus, isn't that going backwards? The original version had that screen at the front and you complained about it. Well, yeah, I did. So the original control box had an LCD screen at 90 degrees right down near face level on the table. So it made it very difficult to change things because the viewing angle was very poor. Well, Wanhao's completely removed the LCD and encoder interface and replaced it with a brand new touch screen interface. So this is a touch screen interface on a Wanhao i3. And although it's not as good as I'd say the Craftbot Plus's full color touchscreen interface, it is a huge improvement in usability over that annoying click wheel and encoder. So you can use this touchscreen to load and unload filament, to home and move the machine in different axes. You can also use it to change printing parameters mid print, which is something I have always come to appreciate on machines like this when you're dialing in filament parameters. Micro SD card. 
Ah yes, that thing. My biggest complaint for the Wanhao i3 has always been the awkward to handle micro SD card and running the machine off G code. Now you can run these machines tethered to your computer, there's no problem with that, but I never recommend tethering to people because if the computer goes to sleep or, or shuts down, your print dies. So I always recommend printing via G code on the SD card included. And the Wanhao i3 Plus has finally done away with that annoying and tedious to use micro SD card. Now they did improve it on the version two. It did make it easy to access, but it's still a micro SD card, which is easy to lose when you're moving it between computer and the printer. So the i3 Plus now has a standard full size SD card. And this goes a long way to usability in terms of loading up G code. It's much more rigid and you're less likely to damage the SD port when you're loading and unloading G-code files on the SD. Awesome. And we can't forget the recall issue by Wenhao for the original heater block crimps, which would fatigue and break after a certain amount of use, something that took out my original Wenhao i3. The i3 Plus has done away with crimps, connectors, or anything, basically. There's just a single ribbon cable that the user plugs in, and that's it. Everything else is hidden with a breakout board, and it's well protected with being true to Wanhao spirit, sheet metal, a little sheet metal box, which is ridiculously overkill, but keeps things very safe. So the only thing you need to do as a user is connect this ribbon cable. Now it's not perfect. I did notice that during moves, sometimes that ribbon cable will, will sort of snag on something and it can unplug like this. If it does unplug, the print will obviously fail, but it's worth noting as well that the printer head can't home properly if the print cable is partially unplugged because the limit switch for the X axis is on the extruder head itself. So if you're having problems, just make sure this plug is properly seated and plugged all the way in. I do hope, however, that they doubled up the wires for the heater tube itself because they use a lot of current and running through one of these wires, I don't think that thing that's gonna last very long. So I hope they've doubled them up, but yeah, so far so good. And I'm sure a lot of you are wondering about the rubbing belt issue that plagued the version one and the version two when how duplicated i3. So to be honest, that shouldn't have existed from the start and there was no excuse for it to take so long to fix that. But I'm happy to say that in version 2.1 and now in the i3 Plus, they have stopped the belts rubbing. They've done that by replacing the aluminium linear bearing holders with plastic linear bearing holders. So now there's clearance for the belt and they don't rub. But I am a little bit disappointed because this seems to be a bit of a, an afterthought fix. The plastic bearing holders certainly aren't as rigid as the original aluminium bearing holders and really it shouldn't have rubbed in the first place, guys. So yes, it doesn't rub anymore, but a little bit disappointed that they've had to go to plastic to fix that problem. But what about print quality? Well, so far all the improvements I've mentioned, the touch screen, the larger SD card interface, the removal of the external electronic box, they're all usability improvements. But the actual printing, it's still the same 200 by 200 by 180 millimeter size bed. It's still the same single extruder Mark 10 style with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. And it's still the same overall design. So in my experience, the print quality was identical to what I got off the Wanhao Duplicator 2, which is my Cocoon Create. So the Wanhao version one had a few other issues, which I didn't really like. But the Wernhau version two has actually been a really good machine in my experience and one I use almost every day when I'm just looking to print something. So this machine will give you very much the same print quality but with an improved user experience. So in terms of what I've printed so far, I printed a huge batch of pink Maker's Muse Maker Coins for Maker Fair. Say that 10 times fast. So if you picked up a pink Maker Coin when you visited me on the weekend at the Powerhouse Museum, it was printed on this printer. And similarly, I tried my torch test. Again, no, no surprises there. It worked just as well as I expected off a Mark 10 extruder on a Wanhao i3. And also I was really surprised by this. This is an articulated trilobite, I'll link it in the description. And I tried this at Maker Faire on a filament I had never used before at PLA defaults within Simplify 3D. And it worked first time. And you know you got, you're onto a winner when this articulation goes all the way back like that. That means you've got a really accurate machine and means I'm really happy with the print quality off this machine. Again, I need to say it with every review, an open frame machine is better suited to printing in PLA. You can print ABS on this machine. It does have a heated bed like the previous i3 duplicators, but you're not gonna be printing the biggest ABS prints you can because open frame, you will get warping. But there still is a few things about the i3 Plus that I didn't quite like. Firstly is the noise it makes while printing. So I mentioned the fan noise is reduced. Yes, it is very much so, but the bed seems to make a bit of noise, which is probably due to uh, the linear bearings or maybe the springs. 
So keep in mind the Duplicator i3 is a fully manually leveled and nozzle height leveling system. It has four springs on each corner of the bed, though they have replaced the annoying wing nuts with very nice thumb screws now, which is fantastic. You do need to level it yourself manually. And I think these springs plus maybe the linear bearings used means the bed makes a bit of noise moving back and forth. It's nothing to, nothing to worry about too much, but when you put your hand on it, you can dampen it. So clearly there's a little bit of vibrations going along there. And something to really keep in mind is the spool holder. So because they removed the side caddy with the control electronics, the only place for a spool holder left was kind of on top of the machine. And this really is not a good idea. So let me demonstrate. This is a one kilo roll of PLA. But you can see the extra mass that this introduces into the frame. So when you're printing, this is gonna definitely make your prints of lower quality if you load a large spool on top. So I highly recommend printing an external spool holder with a PTFE tube running into the extruder. Not only will this remove the mass from the, the gantry, but also it will stop uh, the print head pulling on the filament and introducing artifacts from that. And then there's the portability aspect of this printer. So yes, it's, the side caddy is removed. It is easier to transport than, it's, than the previous versions of i3, but it's still difficult to handle. The sheet metal digs into your hand something fierce when you're picking it up and you are tempted to grab it from here. This is not a handle. It's not really a good spool holder, but it's certainly not a good handle. Do not carry the machine from this. Don't do it. It does have these little rubber feet that fit onto the edges of the sheet metal and you will lose them as soon as you transport the printer. This machine has lost every single one. Those little rubber feet are definitely an afterthought and I wouldn't even bother with them to be honest, you'll just lose them straight away. <laughs> so where does that leave us with the Wanhao i3 Plus? Well this machine's priced at around 500 US from the Ultimate 3D Printing Store, making it about 100 bucks more than the Wanhao Duplicator i3 version 2.1. So that's a lot of money to justify, but at the same time, after using both of these machines for a long period of time, the usability improvements of the touch screen, the larger SD card, the fact that I can transport it without having to worry about breaking that umbilical cord of wires is kind of worth it for me. But if $400 is your hard limit, the Wanhao Duplicator i3 2.1 is definitely still a fantastic machine. My Cocoon Create, which is the rebrand from Aldi, is still going strong and I fitted a Flexion extruder to that so I could print flexible materials. Keep in mind that again, they share much of the same hardware. This is a Mark 10 extruder and there's lots of hop-up parts available on the internet, as well as a humongous community of people making and 3D printing upgrades to this style of design. I mean, the Wanhao i3 user group on Facebook has over 3,000 members. That goes to show how much of a support community is around this brand of printer. And it's actually quite comical or amusing that Wanhao as a company, a Chinese company, has managed to get their machines into consumer supermarkets and foster such a great community worldwide when much larger 3D printing companies, I'm not gonna name names, have completely failed to do the same thing. That's going to do it guys for this review of the Wanhao Duplicator i3 Plus. A huge thanks to Wanhao and the Ultimate 3D Printer Store for sending me this machine for review and also sending me the Wanhao Duplicator 6 which I'll be reviewing shortly which was a prize in my 25,000 subscriber giveaway and that giveaway winners, those giveaway winners will be announced very shortly so don't miss that. If you enjoyed this video here on Makers Muse guys and want to see future 3D printing content, for example I do unbiased reviews and we pride ourselves in providing this content to you guys completely unbiased, no money has changed hands between me and Wen Hao or Ultimate 3D Printing Store to bring you this review. Definitely hit that subscribe button because it means a lot to us and I'd like to have you on board. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later guys, bye. Here's the